Hey guys, it's Karen, and today I wanted to talk about one of my favourite mutations, which is the Opaline mutation uh, in Budgery Guards. It's one of my favourites because it brings out such a beautiful colour, brings that body colour straight into the wing colour, and it just sort of spreads that nice colour around. Um, so yeah, so I hope you enjoy my video today, and I hope it really helps. I, I hope it's really helpful. Alright guys, so today I'm going to talk about opaline mutation um, and here's some um, of the identifiers, the main identifiers of the mutation. This is one of my favourite mutations. So the main identifier is that the body colour infuses onto the wings. Um, so this can be, this will be through the V in the mantle area. Um, the World Budgerigar standard says that it's not to go through to the main flight feathers um, so basically just the V in the mental area should have the body colour infused with the flight feathers uh, having no colour in them. Um, the V or mantle area is clear of markings or has lessened markings. Um, this is the standard is that the, the best opaline will have no marking in the V area so this is the V behind the neck and I'll show you in some pictures um, shortly what that looks like but it's basically the shoulder area between the two wings. Um, if they do have markings there it doesn't mean they're not an opaline it just means they're a badly marked opaline because the opaline refers to the colour infusion which it gives an opalescence so that's where, what the word comes from. The white stripe on the wing is larger, so on every primary flight feather there is a white stripe. Now on a normal this is quite minimal, but on an opaline it gets quite large. Um, the down is white on an opaline budgie. The body colour is slightly diluted um, by about 10%. Some you won't, it's very hard to notice, but some can be quite diluted by it. Uh, wing and tail feathers can have loss of pigment, so some... Uh, opaline birds will have white patches in the tail feathers or their markings on the wing are reduced as well and this is this uh, impacts how the the V or mantle area can be clear of markings um, basically the opaline affects the the pigment of the feathers to some degree it does not affect the pigment of the eye so an opaline without any other kind of mutations, um, noisy budgies, and no plan for any other kind of mutations will have a white iris and a black eye, uh, and their feet shouldn't be affected either, but um, it can be diluted I guess, I'm not sure. Uh, cheek patches remain unaffected again, it's not affected by the mutation. Mask spots can sometimes be heavier interestingly enough, and some people have noticed that Opalines can be more prone to flecking, um, which is strange seeing as the, the um, mutation seems to affect pigmentation to some degree. Okay, so this is um, a really good example of an opaline. You can see that the body colour has gone through into the feathers here. He's got a nice large white stripe here. He's got little blue feet. He's quite bright. He's actually a sky violet. You can see his cheek patches are normal here. He's very heavily spotted with his mask spots. And you can see opalescence going up into the head here. Um, also, another thing to note is that opalines have seem to have thinner uh, undulations on the head as well. And he's got a little bit of flecking there, but he's actually pretty good. Um, here's another example of an opaline. You, again, you can see the large white stripe here. You can see... Yeah, this isn't a very good example, this picture, but you can see the markings are a little bit thinner. This is the V area here. Um, he is a grey-green, so uh, it's a little bit difficult to really tell uh, as his grey-green appears similar to, to a yellow in his wings. But you can tell he's opaline due to the larger spots here and that, that V marking here. Um, this is another opaline, this is a baby opaline, uh, not a very good, again this is the V, not a very good V marking area because um, she has lots of V's, sorry, uh, lots of markings in that area, but again she's got that opaline colouring going all the way through, and I notice they tend to have larger black spots here. You can't yet see her white stripe because her feathers haven't fully grown out yet, but you've got some opalescence going into the head there. This is actually a double factor sky violet, um, 
Violet doesn't tend to show up well in pictures, but you can tell she's a double factor sky violet because she's got teal in her tail feathers here and some teal here, which shows that she's not actually a cobalt at all. She doesn't have any dark factors. But that's beside the point at the moment. Uh, this is a close up of her again, so again, really good. Um, view of the body color going into the edges of the feathers. It doesn't go into the center of the feathers, um, hence why Spangle Opalines will have it only on the, the centers. But you can see there is a slight depigmentation in the center of the feather as well, um, noticed on these feathers here. And um, that's where the Opaline gene actually interferes with the uh, pigment of these feathers. This is a normal uh, violet, just for comparison. Uh, this one's Cobalt Violet. Uh, it's going to be seen by the navy blue here. But you can see this, the V area here has got no body colour in it whatsoever. Um, the black is quite dark. Um, as in it covers all of it. There's no deep pigmentation in the centre of the feathers or anything like that. So this is a normal baby for comparison. And again, the normal baby again for comparison. Just to show you here. Um, and again... Okay, so this is a normal grey with a, um, a violet opaline again. So you look at him here, he's got beautiful white in his wing markings here, as opposed to the opaline here, who's got the blue going all the way through. You can see his large wing stripe compared to this guy, which you can't even see his wing stripe. Um, this is the uh, grey green opaline from before. Here you can see a really good version of his V where he's got less markings and you can see the markings on the head are also reduced um, uh, compared to um, the normal here. It's, it's a bit of a blurry picture compared to like say this one here which is a normal. Okay um, yeah so and you can see his wing stripe as well. This is um, another good example of the V this is an opaline dominant pied, so you've got the dominant pying here, that's nothing to do with the opaline mutation. But it's a really good example of that V with reduced markings in it. You can also see slight depigmentation in these feathers here, and the body colouring uh, merging into these feathers really well. On this little baby's tail feathers, you can see the slight depigmentation here, uh, caused by the opaline mutation. Here's another example of a good V nice clear V and the depigmentation in the feathers going along here. Really good example of the stripe. I've been having problems with my phone. It just connects and disconnects. I'm disconnecting it because it's bugging me. Uh, I deleted all my pictures before. I was so angry. But yeah, anyway, sorry. Okay, so that's a really good example of the, the V, clear V on an opaline. The body colour going through. It is quite a dark picture, but I just thought it demonstrated this well. It also demonstrates that wing stripe really really well. She's actually a yellow face um, violet sky but you can't see the yellow face on this picture because it's so dark you see a little yellow on her tail there. And this is her again. Again you can't see her yellow but I can assure you she's definitely a yellow face. Um, but a really good example of the V. She's really beautifully marked. I'm really happy with this bird. Um, no hardly any markings in there whatsoever and you can see very little markings on the wings here. So she's a real nice example of an opaline and I'm quite happy with her but again you can see the little cheek patches, normal, mask spots, normal uh, and so she's quite heavily marked. She's, she's um, only about three months old, she's going through her first molt so I think she's got some dark adult feathers through and not off the others. Um, this is an opaline cobalt that I've got here, again V, beautiful V but this is a really good example of the depigmentation in the tail feathers so you can see the white coming through here uh, so that's a really good example of that. She's a bit messy, she's going for a molt. And again, a closer, a closer picture of that depigmentation of the tail feathers. Uh, she's slightly uh, diluted in her colour, so she would be one of the more dilute opalines. Um, but that's all she is, she's just an opaline cobalt. This is um, an opaline sky violet of mine. Uh, here's the the same guy as the first picture and it's a real good example of that opalescence coming in on the head feathers here. Uh, it has heavy mask spots, normal cheek patch, uh, normal white iris, black pupil, um, and, and normal sear as well for a male. And this is a close up of his opalescence in his head uh, area as well as little just facing over that way and his chest is here. So yeah, a really good example of that opalescence coming through. And here is him on the side again, wing stripe, body colour in the feathers. Uh, he's just markings in his V area, so he's not that 
great in that area, but again, opalescence up there, uh, white iris, etc, etc. Uh, and his, this is a few opalines here next to a normal, so again, it's another opportunity here. This girl here, she is actually an opaline. She does have the green coming through. She's a cinnamon opaline. She's got the white stripe there. She does have a lot of yellow coming through. But again, see how she's, she's heavily marked there. She's actually the, the daughter of the last one. But compared that to a normal, who is, there's definite linings to where the markings, the undulations are. This is a grey green opaline as well, and you can see where he is. So you notice that what markings they do have, they seem to be larger, patchier, uh, with, but they also seem to have larger amounts of colouring around the, the marking, if that makes sense. She's also an opaline too, she's a violet and an opaline. Um, so yeah. So it's just a nice comparison between a uh, some opalines and a normal right here. Um, this is there, uh, the cobalt opaline from before, just a real nice example from the side. Uh, heavily, heavy uh, mask spots. That just because some have heavy mask spots, it doesn't mean it's that's what it is. The general criteria for an opaline uh, is that the body colour infuses into the wings, doesn't go down to the primaries, and has a clear V. That's the main criteria. You can see some depigmentation de of tail down there, but it's a bit difficult. Uh, another example here, his opalescence actually extended very far, I even went into his white um, stripe, but this is a double factor violet opaline. Um, and you can see his opalescence coming up here. Uh, this is a uh, dominant pied opaline. Again, she's got very dirty V area, but she's an opaline because she's got that colouring coming through. Um, if it's a normal bird, there would be no body colour up here. Again, another example of an opaline. You can see the depigmentation in the centre of these feathers. Um, you can see the reduced black markings here and his wing stripe with some opalescence in it. Uh, female uh, opaline, wing stripe, body colour and wings, clear V, more or less reduced markings, your main ones there. Um, it also, sorry, also shows normal females there as well. So this is, this is a normal, uh, this is Alvin, he is a yellow face uh, sky blue. But he's actually split to opaline, and in my experience, I have found that uh, males split to opaline have a small amount of opalescence coming through. Now, even though he has colouring coming through, he's definitely not an opaline, uh, and that's because his markings are actually very normal. He's got very normal uh, shaped markings here. His wing stripe, you can see here, there's hardly anything there. He's he's a definite normal, um, and. The way I can also prove that is I have bred him with an opaline, and if he was an opaline and I bred him with an opaline, all babies would be opaline, and they weren't. So, just in case you're wondering. But, yeah, this is a really good example of opalescence. Um, he was being a bit silly today, and he wouldn't let me take a very good picture. But you can see these wing markings. They're all very normal in the way that they're shaped compared to an opaline um, and such. So, again, it just shows really good example of opalescence. Um, so this is actually a fault in birds, this opalescence. You don't actually want it, but I find it's a really good way to um, differentiate a split uh, cockbird from a non-split cockbird. Um, and this is him again showing his opalescence off. Um, but yeah, so he's a normal a normal bird there. Uh, this is another normal bird. This is another this is, uh, sky violet again. Um, and again, normal markings, uh, you know, the darkness goes up, right up to the top. Interestingly, I noticed that these ones are lighter, just having a look at this, and maybe that's something to do with being split for opaline. But yeah, he's definitely, he, he's split for opaline, as you can see, there's the opalescent in there, but the markings are of a normal bird. And you can see the white edgings here. So the blue is coming through, but there's definitely white edgings here. This guy here is... Um, a grey wing spangle who's also split for opaline. You can see a bit of opalescence going through into him too. Um, also, and actually, last you you can see very minimal white stripe, very minimal. Um, this is a normal spangle as well, uh, who is split for opaline, and he's proved that through breeding as well. And again, you can see the opalescence coming through. But this is considered a normal spangle, and I'll show you pictures of opaline spangles very shortly. 
um, and this is another opalescent normal spangle. So this is a normal spangle who's split for opaline and it's just sort of coming through, but he is not considered a um, he's not considered an opaline. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, and this is a grey wing um, demonstrating opalescence. Um, just with this last guy, yeah, some can be very fine lines, but he is. Uh, I'll show you an opaline spangle very shortly. You'll see there's hardly any colouring up here. In an opaline spangle, this would be coloured with the body colour. So that's how we know that he is a normal spangle that's split opaline. Um, okay, so back to our normal grey wing split opaline. Again, you can see that opalescence coming through, but the markings are all normal. The V is normal in colour. So, yeah. Okay, um, now this is a really, really good example of the different colours of down. So this baby here, this is an opaline baby, it has really white down. This is a normal baby and it has grey down. So I remember when I said opaline sort of has that slight depigmentation, it has that slight dilution, it affects the down as well. Um, and you can also see the colour coming through in these, these pin feathers here in the wings. So yes, this is a really good example. Uh, again, another picture, normal baby, normal wing colour here. Uh, opaline baby, white down, and wing colour coming through these pin feathers. It's a really good example of the differences in the down colours. So this is my normal spangle again, who's split opaline. Uh, again, see how there's large amounts of white here, so that's how we know he's definitely a normal. Um, but I'm going to show you now actual opaline spangles, so you can really see the difference. So here is a violet cinnamon opaline spangle, and you can see how much Violet is actually in that V area, and you can see where she's supposed to have the spangle markings. It's a very thick violet line uh, compared to um, this guy here, who's got a thin black line. So, and when it is opalescent, it's a very thin blue line. And you compare that to this girl here, who is yeah a lot thicker purple line here. Um, this is a golden face. Um, violet opaline spangle cinnamon. So she's she's got a mouthful of mutations. But again, you've got that V area of body color. You've got the violet coming through in the wing feathers where the spangle markings would normally be. So she's a really good example of a um, an opaline cinnamon. I'm sorry, an opaline spangle, and next to her is a spangle cinnamon, so a normal one without the opaline. You can see the difference in the V areas. This is actually her sister. You can see the, the differences in the V areas. See how we've got the violet here, but there's no um, colouring in this area here for Itha. Itha is her name. Okay, and there's a nice close-up showing you that V of violet, the absence of the, the sky violet here. Um, so yeah, really good example. Um, this, these two opaline spangles here. Um, now, I haven't gone over the fact that this is a sex link gene just yet, but hens cannot be split for opaline. So if they have the opaline anywhere in their genetics, it will show because it's unopposed by the um, W chromosome. So this is this one's mum. This is uh, the mum. She's called Squish. She's an opaline spangle, and she's really heavily marked or darkly marked spangle, I should say, rather. But you can see the colouring coming towards the end there, and you can see that coloured V. And then this girl, you can see her coloured V, and because she's a cinnamon, her markings don't show up so well on her body, on her wing feathers, sorry. But you can um, certainly see that thick violet there. Um, a baby opaline. You can see the colouring coming through and the white down. Uh, close of that baby uh, from another angle. White down. Colouring coming through. This is an opaline spangle baby. Um, this is just an, an, uh, an opaline, not a spangle opaline. And you can see, see how this one, it's got colour, black marking, then colour. So it's that depigmentation. And that's really common with opalines. You've just got that colour coming through. This is a violet opaline. And again, another view of that one there. So, yeah, so you can see that colour coming through beautifully up in the V and up here. Um, really good example of opaline spangle again, so you can see that lacing where the spangle markings are, the colouring has come through. And comparing the opaline spangle to a, an opaline, uh, V, body coloured, 
body colour in the wings, heavily marked V area, but that's fine. Deep slate depigmentation in the centres of these ones here. This little guy is actually got a little spot here, and I think he's split for recessive pied. Yeah, and then these are two opaline spangles together, and that just shows the lacing of the wings beautifully on an opaline spangle. Um, and this is a real close-up of a little of the little opaline cinnamon, um, and you can see that colour coming through just on the edges of that the cinnamon marking. Uh, and this is the two sisters together, so there's an opaline cinnamon and an opaline spangle. It's weird that it went backwards. Anyway, um, V area, um, and she's cinnamon, so she's a lot lighter. She's got that depigmentation going on the tail there. Uh, undulations are thinner than a normal bird. Um, and then we've got this little opaline spangle here. Uh, this is a little bunch of opalines. So we've got a, uh, an opaline, opaline spangle, opaline spangle. I think that was an opaline, just an opaline. And this is an opaline cinnamon spangle. Here, so you can see she's a lot paler looking than the others. So, um, breeding expectations with opaline. So, uh, we'll just go through this. Opaline is a sex linked recessive gene is a, and is present on the Z chromosome. So, this means that you need two copies for it to show because it's recessive, so it needs two copies to show. Um, now, um, Male birds have two Z chromosomes, which is analogous to our X chromosome, and female birds have a Z and a W chromosome, which is analogous to our X and Y chromosome. So they're kind of flipped. In mammals, you know, the males are X and Y, and females are XX, but in birds it's kind of flipped. The females have the two different chromosomes, and the males have the same chromosomes. So they're homozygous, the males are homozygous when it comes to the sex chromosomes. So basically the female birds actually determine gender um, in birds, so yeah. So the sex link recessive gene, it's on the Z chromosome, um, and basically when you have a female bird, the W chromosome is shorter than the Z chromosome, so when you have that gene on that Z chromosome, it's actually been unopposed by anything else, so there's no other gene to oppose it on the other side, so it gets expressed. So, the opaline gene, in this case, I'm going to represent it by a Z with a little Z of a little O up there, and an all gene is going to re represent it uh, as a Z without the O. So, if we're going to breed an opaline cock to a normal hen, so we've got our opaline cock, these are the expectations we'll get. So, each baby will get an opaline uh, gene from the father uh, on each side there, and then um, they'll get their normal gene from the mother, uh, and then they'll get their um, w gene here down here. So we've got you know two Z's make a male, Z W make a female. So basically here we've got um, uh, these birds are only carrying one uh, opaline gene, and these birds are only carrying one opaline gene. These cock birds here, their opaline gene is opposed by a normal gene here, so it will not express in these birds. These birds will appear normal. The hens, however, their opaline gene is not um, opposed by anything, just the W, so they will express. So we'll get a normal bird, uh, a no sorry, a normal cock split for opaline, um, opaline hen, normal split opaline cock, and then a normal hen. So basically what you'll see is you'll see all hens opaline, all cocks will be normal split opaline, so they'll appear normal, but you'll know that they're going to be carrying it. Okay, so if you're going to breed an opaline hen to a normal cock, um, the expectations are as we see. So uh, uh, an opaline hen, um, we'll see. So a normal cock, he's going to give um, a normal um, chromosome to half of his offspring and then the other normal chromosome to the other half of his offspring. So all the offspring are going to get a normal Z chromosome. Um, the hen, she's going to give... Um, half of the offspring, she's going to give an opaline Z chromosome, and half of the offspring is going to get W. So we've got all the cocks will be split opaline, but will appear normal. All the hens will be normal. So these are our expectations here. All the birds look normal, but the cocks will be split to opaline, so they'll be carrying opaline. So and a now we're going to breed a normal cock, which is split to opaline to a normal hen. 
So our results are this. So the normal split bovine cock, he will appear normal. He will give half of his offspring his normal Z chromosome, and he will give half of his offspring um, the opaline chromosome. Now the hen she'll give half of her offspring the normal, and then half of her offspring the W. So we'll get 50% um, of cock babies born will be normal normal. 50% of cock babies will be split for opaline but will appear normal. 50% of hens will be normal and 50% of hens will be opaline. So these are our results here. Um, so they'll appear normal and appear that half the hens will appear normal but um, you'll get 50% uh, of hens will be opaline in this case. So now we put a normal opaline cock to an opaline hen. So the normal opaline, normal split opaline cock will give half of his babies the normal chromosome and then he'll give half of his babies the opaline linked chromosome. The hen, she will give half of her babies the opaline chromosome and she will give half of her babies the W chromosome. So we get 50% uh, of cocks will appear opaline, 50% of hens will appear opaline, 50% of cocks will be split for opaline and 50% of hens will just be normal. So this is what you get, you get a nice mix. Okay, now I, it's pretty obvious, but I like to put it in anyway. Opaline cock to opaline hen. Um, the opaline cock will give half babies, uh, half of his babies the opaline chromosome on this side, and then half of his babies the opaline chromosome on this side. The hen will give all the babies the opaline, so half of the babies the opaline chromosome up there, and half of the babies the W chromosome. So it makes a hundred percent opaline. So opaline cock, opaline cock. Opaline hen, opaline hen, so you can see here what we've got. Um, hey guys, I hope this video is really helpful and I hope you can now identify the opaline mutation in Budrigo. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching.